Hello, hello, welcome to Quack. Hello. It's not how it's said, but we'll leave it. Uh, today, well, do it again. Do it one more time. I didn't like my transition there. <laughs> so you get to redo I know. it? I get to I redo. Didn't? Well, I edit. I edit. Yeah, you don't get to redo it. That's fair. Yeah. That's, that's fair. True. Really? Edit. I put in the extra time. I'm watching that last out. No, you're not. Hello, hello, and welcome to Quackalope. Oh, I like the other way. You oh, did. you liked it. Yeah. Hello, hello, and welcome to Quackalope. <laughs> Today we are covering five, six-ish games. Yeah. That you played mm -hmm. while you were deployed. Yes, sir. So I'm here with Derek Funkhauser. We took some family photos. They were absolutely adorable. You and your wife run and manage one of the largest Facebook community groups around the board game hobby space. Tell people a little bit about Board Game Spotlight, yeah. what you do, how they can get involved. So my wife, uh, Lizzie, and I, uh, we help co-run the Board Game Spotlight, which you can find us on Instagram. Mostly her. Mo yeah, that's on honestly no, true. Genuinely. I, genuinely yeah. yeah. She's the community manager. She runs uh, the Spotlight now, so if you have any questions, uh, if you get approved, it was probably her. Uh, you know, I was gone for almost a year, and so she really stepped up yeah. to the plate, and she's doing it. Absolutely phenomenal job. Tell me a little bit about that year. We're covering games that you played while you were deployed. Tell me, to whatever degree you can, sure. what you were doing, who yeah. you are, what you do. Okay. All the stuff I don't know. That, that's fair. No. Um, I'm a National Guard member, so I'm a reservist. So I came up on deployment, and I went on a peacekeeping non-combat tour to the Ukraine. Hmm. I was there for 10 months. Um, we were there as military advisors. Um, and it was super interesting, really cool, fascinating to be able to get into another culture and another... Um, country uh and i'll tell you even crazier in these times where we had to deal with covid sure uh, that was a whole nother balancing act uh that we that we had to deal with um but thankfully we did and nobody was seriously injured or anything like that yeah um but when you're deployed uh especially in my case you know you're living with uh other people uh and i was in a cubicle uh steel container with four others or three others plus myself i had about 10 by 10 of my you know 10 by 10 foot square that yeah. I lived in with a um, a blanket that would like just, uh, just uh, close for my curtain. privacy curtain. Yeah. Um, Love those. Yeah. And uh, I could touch the head of my wall and the end of my wall with, from head to toe. You're, so, you're a big boy. I'm a taller, I'm a taller guy. Boy. Yeah, I'm a taller guy. Yeah. Uh, so it was interesting. And uh, so when you live with other, other people like that, you... And you're a board gamer. I'm a board gamer, so they, of course... You know, you, you learn and you talk and you meet new people, you meet friends. Um, and, you know, with me being a board gamer, I mm. brought things with me. Space is limited, yep. um, but I was able to pack a few things away, and that's what I want to talk about today. Yeah, we're going to talk about the games that you were able to bring with you, what yeah. you left behind for some yeah. of the guys to continue playing, yep. and what the experience was like. Now, before we get too far into it, uh, there's always that element of a thing. When, when I, I mean, I grew up in Kentucky. I have yeah. all the respect in the world for people who are, you know, men and women of service. Mm -hmm. And so there is the extension of thank you for your service. <laughs> I, I, I believe sure. and trust that everyone that's watching this extends the same. It's a cliche in a way, but mm -hmm. it's also the best thing that I know to say, right? Yeah. It's, so it's a hard balance. It, it is a hard balance, and and for us, you know. We appreciate the support yeah. that, that most uh, most give us, and we do this not out of wanting to be recognized, yep. but mainly, you know, either because we feel feel called to defend what what we believe in, or even just uh, to provide for others, provide for our family, and, and everything like that. Especially with the National Guard and reservists, um, because we're in the the state uh, mm -hmm. militia, you know, we are often called more into service for um, acts, emergency, yeah. acts of emergency, hurricanes, yeah. tornadoes. Um, a lot of people right now are deployed in their state doing COVID vaccinations, yep. you know, yep. and doing a lot of that. And I, I feel personally, uh, I feel great about those types of missions. Um, you know, deploying wasn't really something I was very excited about, but I went and, and did what I, what I was called to do um, and did it well. And it was, it was fine. But, yeah, I mean, when you see a service member, you can thank them for their service. Um, you know, I, you can even say, hey, you know, thanks for what you're doing. We support you. Yeah, you yeah. know, it, I always, I always usually utilize the cliche. And yeah. And usually have the caveat that I, yeah. I, I recognize that it's a cliche. Yeah. But it doesn't step away from the fact sure. that, you know, you all and, and anyone else who is deployed active duty or, or, or you know, already retired mm -hmm. uh, back into civilian life, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those of us that, that are not part of... You know the armed forces or whatever you right. actually say, right? Military. Uh, you know, appreciate the heck out of what you all do. 
Either way, we're talking yeah. about board games. We are talking Let's about board games. Let's dig in. What did you What did you initially bring, and how did you make the determination of? Were you sure you were bringing games with you? Yeah, like, that's, that's yeah, an yeah. initial question. Yeah, yeah. you had so, to have some stuff to play. Uh, yeah, and I knew I was, but again, space was limited. So yeah. it was like, okay, what do I have available that I can take with me? And I was given a uh, con- like a, a personal container, like a lock uh, locker. Okay, and anything that could go in <laughs> it's there. Like toothpaste. It, it's like isn't a cat. Coming, but it's it's like both. a cat. If it sit, if it fits, it sits. So yeah. if it could get in the locker, it's we're good. going across the ocean. Uh, or by air. Um, so I needed to stick with things that are small. Yeah. I needed to stick with things that didn't take up a lot of room. Um, well, I do have some honorable mention things that I'll talk about, but these were a few of the ones that were tried and true. What'd you start with? And were these, did you leave with them packaged like this? Yes. So I, I left, these are my personal ones, but, uh, you can get these on Amazon. They're the photo box, uh, 16 count photo box. And they're super awesome for all of our small box games. Not a bad way to organize if you're no here. If you, yeah, if you want space, they're if great. If you space don't limiters. mind getting rid of the box, if you don't mind getting rid of the box, but you know, I, lo- I know some people will put their boxes in storage and just keep sure. these out uh, because they really do declutter yeah, things. They stack and well. I've seen, and in fact, actually, when I went to uh, overseas. Um, I actually had a friend who printed out yep. every board game cover and actually made this look like a box. So it looks it looks right. super nice. Anyway. Right, it looks great. What'd you start with? Where'd you begin? Love letter. Yeah, yeah. Started this one with right love letter, here, right on the top. Sure did. Uh, why did, was love letter the first thing you um, brought? Be, mainly because it's quick, it's fast, it's accessible. That's the Batman that's, version. That's the Batman yep. version of love Batman. letter. Okay, I was a little confused for a moment. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember yeah. this yeah. comic book. So this was this is my personal love letter, but nice. uh, the one I took over with me is the original. Well, actually, the reprint with actually it has the new. There's a new character in it that's pretty great. The spy. Okay. Um, really enjoyed that card, but. Um, the reason I started with it is because it's easy. Once you understand what the card yep. does, you just pl- you, you have two cards. The decision space was small, but it's still weighty. Yep. You know, and it's just a good like talking and not a lot of sitting and like oh man, planning out. You know, draw a card, play. A card. If you're playing with a lot of guys that don't play board games, yeah. and you're trying to yeah. talk them into sitting down and having a drink or two and yep. enjoying something. I don't. Do you, were you able to drink? On the, yeah, I mean, there. Okay. Oh yeah, no. I don't there know were, what the there was drinking. Yeah, there was drinking. There was. You sit uh, down. You sit down yeah. around. You of know, course. around the table. You're having yeah. a meal. You're having some drinks, yep. and you're handing out a, a stack of cards. That's and honestly, it. a lot of these are games like that where they would go up there, and you yep. could have a drink or two, and you would play these games, um, and they just require enough strategy to be fun and competitive, but not like. So much that uh, it's overwhelming. It wasn't overwhelming. Yeah. Love letter. Is that the only uh, social deduction esque game that you had with you? Uh, I actually had Koo with me as well. Koo with you. Uh, yeah, well. and I don't think okay. Koo is in here. It actually is right there. There yep. it is. Koo. Yeah. So Koo is the other social deduction game that that we really enjoyed. Why these two? What separated them in terms of? Because there's a lot of other player count. That's that was the core. yeah that okay. and, and and also the deduction is a little different here because players can lie yep. and there's a little bit more sleuthing and a little bit sure. more uh, backstabbery and the military loves that type of yeah. thing so I knew that if I could hook them on love letter I they'd, could hook they'd them graduate on graduate to yeah. this they yeah. move up you'd yeah. be like ah oh, you like that right let me give you right. something where you can betray me mm-hmm. I like mm-hmm. that. or you get to lie <laughs> uh, we've got battle line yeah. I'm not so, familiar with this one. Battleline is a game. I think this is the medieval version. Okay. Uh, Battleline's also known. Oh no, this is not the medieval. It's the original. So Battleline Medieval came out, um, but then there's uh, there's another version, Shot and Totten, uh, okay. which re-implemented this. But it's a two-player game, and I realized that I may not always be able to get four people or three people around the table, but yep. I could probably you know get a, a friend of mine uh, to play for sure. So two players seem pretty solid. That is a side, you know, 1v1, and you play a battle line, and you're playing cards in suits like poker on okay. your side of the battle, trying to get, um, like, sets of numbers or the, the banners on the flags, and then it's like the first person to win three adjacent battlefields, or five total, mm-hmm. and it's just a super quick game, and that's another one that has a little bit more strategy and a little bit more tug-of-war-esque, um, but again... If I started with those others, I could get to that one. Repeat play on this. If you've got someone head to head, does this get better with age? Like, if you're ten games deep with with another player, is it is it better, or is it you're teaching a new person every time? No, I actually enjoy playing replaying this with different players yeah. because okay. the randomness of what you draw really keeps it fresh. Yeah, like what you're drawing into your hand changes your strategy and what you're able to do, and you kind of push your luck on okay. um, really spreading yourself out. In, in the war, the battle theme works in the military. 
something like yeah. you know. So a little correlation well. there, yeah. Jaipur, another two player. Yep. And this one, correct me if I'm wrong. This one for me, I really like repeat plays with the mm-hmm. same person. Mm-hmm. This one grows as you start learning it the does. other player's strategy. It does. And navigating. All right, what's what's Jaipur? How did it get on your list? So Jaipur was Am one I of saying the, it wrong. Jaipur, Jaipur. I don't know. It's I'm probably saying it wrong. Yeah. One of us is saying. I'm it. from Kentucky. We're both saying it right. Where are you? Where are you from? I'm from Illinois. So Midwest. We're both halfway wrong. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I got this because I uh, number one, it was it was a good two player game, and I yep. really liked it. And uh, the other thing too was again with space, I had to find games that could fit in these. Mm-hmm. I really wanted to find, and this was one of the games that would fit in this container. So I brought it with me, and I realized, you know, I like to play it, but this one has a little bit more weight to yep. it. So I needed to find somebody that you know had been continually playing, kind of like grow them in the cult along yep. the way and then play this and uh and I, I did have a good friend of mine who is a board gamer before i actually found you know found out and then we played this one um over there and this is a lovely two it is it's, it's not great. it never it's never jumped to like my top 10 no it's but just I've a solid always game. been good to play yeah. i've always been very satisfied yep. it never disappoints with what it's doing right but just isn't necessarily doing the best ever no, but it, it doesn't, never disappoints. It never disappoints. Yeah, yeah. it's a very steady, st- solid, it's like, uh, solid game. I, I I lock it up with other games like Hive, for instance. Yeah, Hive has never I been a number like one Hive. for me, but it occupies this space yep. where it's always exactly what it is, and it doesn't try to be more, and it right. doesn't apologize for what it is. No, it's really, really solid. It is. It's a solid game, and it's it's and that's why I picked it because I knew that it would go over well, yep. especially when I, when I knew my audience was with, going to be with nearly anyone. Right. Yeah. And my only audience was likely going to be new gamers. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I need something that I, I know goes over well with just about anybody and uh, is interesting enough and, and, you know, really enjoyed that. Now I see we've got some stuff from Wise Wizard Games. Now That's right. Now it was White Wizard Games uh, when this was printed. It, it, yeah, this is the printing uh, from White Wizard, but yep. they've recently rebranded. Yep. Uh, so this is Wise Wizard. They moved away from the Gandalfian theme. They did. Uh, uh, apparently... Well, no, they went from Gandalf the Great to Gandalf the White. Now well, it's that's Wise. Fair. That's yeah, fair. He's wise now. Um, so, both Hero Realms and Star Realms, um, really only because of the, the theme, right? If yep. someone wants to play fantasy or someone wants to play space, they both play generally about the same with a little bit of differences. But I wanted another game that uh, was, you know, head-to-head, two players, and I wanted to find a deck builder. Yep. And these are just fantastic. Um, I think I've got every single, like... Uh, well, not every single. That would be too many. But I've got quite a few expansions Expansions. You can fit a lot You can fit a these. lot into this. Wise Wizard Games knows how to do deck builders. Yeah, it's, they do. It's kind of their foundation. Yep. It's sort of where they started. Epic it's what was another one I had while I was over there. Epic's fantastic. You also have... I mean, you have their new one, the Robot Quest Arena, yes. that we both played, deck building with yep. Skirmish. Yep. And then, of course, you have Sorcerer, which is a giant game, and that's Much deck bigger. construction, but still... They, when it comes to this realm yeah. of of play, they've got a lockdown. They have this lockdown. They have a lockdown. You're giving a lot of space to both of these, though. I mean, when you when you're when you're matching stuff up, yeah. What is it about about bringing both Star Realms uh, and Hero? Again, it was a theme, but I also uh, I, I like what they do differently. But I wanted to bring both of these. Number one, because I knew if I, if people liked it, I could be like, "Hey, there's an app for this." Both play, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Sure. So I was like, you know, if you want to keep getting this, you could buy the game, or you could play on the app for free. And they're like, "Oh, this is sweet." So I, you know, yeah. Then they actually just played on the app, and they're I'm like, "Oh yeah, and they're you're hooked. still, and you're still right? playing with them." Yeah. Right. Um, but again, this was just a physical way of getting them to like try it out or whatever. Um, and it's just. When we talk solid, solid games, this yeah. has never made my top ten, personally. Yeah. But it is... I know is, some people where it is, but it, again... It has a very big following. It, a yeah. big community. Yeah. But it is it just... When you think of deck builders, when you think of deck builders, like it, you'll rarely see any sort of list that does not talk that about this. That does not have... Yeah. like. Star Realms. I'd, I'd agree. Again, it's never been a top ten for me, yeah. but I've, I've, it's always done exactly yeah. what it tells me it's going. And to I always do. enjoy playing it. Yeah, I'm always like, yeah, let's play. Are there any? Are there any games here that you would have, in retrospect, after ten months over there or so, swapped out, not have brought? Did you not get some to the table? Did yeah. some work better than? Yeah, there were there were a few that. Um, so Age of War was one that I brought over the the yeah. rolling uh, area control game, the dice game. That was fun. Um, I pl- actually bought a few games while I was over there and just okay. left them behind. And some other publishers actually sent us a few care packages. Nice. Yeah, I played through all of the new Aeon's End uh, okay. myself and left that behind. So I played through that content. That was fantastic. I played that solo actually. Yeah, 
Um, really enjoyed that. Uh, I actually built, uh, I've got the game sitting around here somewhere, but I, I made a Shobu. Uh, the game Shobu. Yeah. Um, because I I just made it. I just grabbed and stone and well, I just grabbed paper, colored in like sure, and then I I taught my friend with rocks we found outside. I was like, hey, you know, I don't have an army. That's but awesome. This is, and he's like, dude, this is really it's a cool. Good game. This is really he's cool. Like, I'm like, I know, this? right? And you're like, no, that's what he said. No. Yeah. He's like, did you make this? I'm like, no, man, no, I did not. <laughs> I wish I did. Uh -huh. Um. So I did that. We played a lot of Ticket to Ride. Yeah. Um. And one of the really cool things about that was uh, our little friend group actually created a Ukraine map. Um, Did you leave that over there? We left it there, yeah. Yeah, we gave it to um, like our linguist cell. Oh, like, cool. We had uh, translators. That's cool. Uh, and we left it with them. As, yeah. as, as long as it wasn't like off in the corner of No, 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 no. We gave it. Because I was like, bring that as back a, and as a gift. that or something. Yeah, no, we, so gave, cool. we gave it as a gift and they really enjoyed it. Very nice. Um, and that was pretty cool. Um, were there any games that you, you really wished you had? Did you feel like once you were over there, was there anything that you, you felt like you were missing? Even if it's a big box. Even yeah. If, yeah. Even yeah. if, you know. I'll tell you, what I was really more bummed about was I had FOMO all the time because I'm online, like, uh -huh. seeing all these new Kickstarters. I'm playing, I'm with. previewing stuff. Yeah, and you're online playing yeah. stuff, and I'm just sitting here I'm like, I'm sitting okay. down with ISS Vanguard, and you're going, yeah, yeah I'll be okay. home one day. Okay, okay. We'll you see. know, this yeah. is cool. We'll this there. is cool. Mm -hmm. But I, there wasn't really anything I was, I was missing because I was just finding other ways to replace that. Yeah. I played a lot of online video games. Um, and actually, probably for me personally, the one thing that was kind of like the MVP uh, was Steam and uh, TTS, nice. the Tabletop yeah. Simulator. You got to do a lot of stuff. I got a lot. I, did, I was able to do a lot of uh, TTS with friends and let me play, you know, across country, which is cool. So in terms of uh, friends and family who have deployed ones, who are going to be deployed, uh, yeah, I think these are recommendations solid choices. On, on the ones you have in front of you. Uh, yeah. Any other honorable mentions that people should look up if they're thinking about what they should take take with them? Yeah, you should take Skull King with you. Okay. Uh, you give, give, and give I did that. have that with me yeah. over there, and I left it. Uh, Skull King was... was uh, like a, a must take. Uh, Skull King's great. I took um, a few other card games. I had Epic over there. I had some Magic stuff. Um, really, any sort of card game goes well because it's easy to, to just carry around. Yep. Um, Splendor, actually. We bought a copy of Splendor Walls over there. Okay. Yeah, and that played well. That was another entry-level game that they really enjoyed. And that was cool because we were able to, like, incorporate, like, this is what we do for... This is engine building. Yep. So this is another mechanism, right? And yep. they were like, oh, I like this. This is cool. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Very nice. Well... Thank you for taking the time to show this off. I thought this would be a neat exploration. I mean, how many people have an opportunity to do a, you know, top five or top ten list when it comes to yeah. such a different gaming experience? Like, yeah. we are spoiled with the degree of shelves we have behind <laughs> us and the prototypes we have floating in. Uh, and for me, it, it really uh, condenses the hobby down a little bit when you got to think about what you're going to bring when it's you have true. a steel case and you're going to Ukraine. It's true. Uh, so... Hopefully you all have enjoyed this. Uh, if you made it to this part of the video, leave a comment down below letting us know some of your favorite small box games. Yep. Uh, and if you have people that are in service, uh, friends, family, those around you, take a moment to reach out and tell them that you appreciate them. <laughs> whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing, get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Yeah.